they have choices too and they have options. We're always told what we're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when, when, whenever I get that question about why didn't you have more kids and y'all don't want another one, you know, I, I'm very blunt and, and, and very clear that I don't want to have that health experience that scare that I had before. I want to live to raise my children. Because the other part of this conversation is the the mortality rate amongst black women who are giving birth to children. Like, don't you know, if y'all have been like since I guess like what 2019, 2018, there was an article that came out, you know, where a lot of black women are passing away giving birth to kids. Kind of what Cannon um, you know, said that a lot of their health concerns are being ignored. Uh, we're supposed to just be these strong all around women, you know, who's supposed to just be able to take it, take it, take it. Well, you're talking to somebody who thought she wasn't gonna make it, right? You know, it's, it's, and it's double, okay. mm -hmm. so you know, that, that that's kind of what I wanted to contribute to the conversation that we all have choices and options. And I chose my, I, I want to be here to raise my daughter. You know, it is not a guarantee that I am going to be quote unquote. That that blessed or, or or lucky again if I decide to have another baby. And you know, I've even had friends who say, "Well, you know, maybe you need to get the right doctor. Maybe you do this." And and I've had to tell them, maybe I just choose not to have another child. End of conversation. You need to mind their own business, right? Right, because the other part of the conversation is black women are getting exhausted, exhausted, like very tired of having to explain to people their choices and their decisions. So, because I don't see the same pressure being put on any other race of women than us. We're always having to explain why we don't choose to go the patriarchal or the traditional route. And and it's just like I say, you know, a lot of times, sometimes you, like, like your mama used to say, when you say, well, why mama? Because I said so. <laughs> That's it. I'm not having another child, why? Because yeah. I said so, I choose not to. And and I think a lot of women. I don't know. If, I know it's not just black women. I know you didn't say that, but I don't know. Do we experience it more? I know that women, period, just experience that. But don't I want anything, anything that women experience? Black women experience more, <laughs> more aggressively. <laughs> it's basic math. Darren wanted to ask something, and then Evelyn wanted to say something. So, so to Miss Jovo's point, um, when my when my wife had her baby, uh, well, our daughter, um, we had to have an emergency C-section. I don't know how much of an emergency it was. I think they was full of shit. But anyways, they said we had to have an emergency C-section, and um, that was the most scared I ever seen my wife. You know, she was laying on the table. She was conscious. You know, they numbed up, and I was standing right there while they cutting her up and stuff like that. She was shaking and everything, and you can just she was scared. You know, and um. That experience alone just put me in a, in a whole nother mindset of like women go through a lot when they're having these kids and no woman should be pressured to have a baby by anybody, you know, and I think the world don't even realize what women go through, especially men, because we so focused on what we want. We want a kid and this and that. We don't have to go through that. So, it, you know, and we don't have to ever worry about going through that. You know what I'm saying? We can we can go through that. So um, we, we can't feel what you all are feeling. But, you know, but just going, I think a lot of men should just be in that birth room to see what these women are going through and, and just try to empathize with them because it's a scary moment. You know what I'm saying? You don't know if you're going to lose your wife right there or, and the baby. You don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And um, so I don't, I don't think no woman should be pressured into um, having a baby because sometimes it can become life threatening. And that's, it's ultimately your life and the baby's life. And, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just messed up that. You know, um, you know, I've always said women have it worse than men, you know, on a lot of levels um, because y'all have to deal with so much more. And it's crazy that th this is one of the things that you all have to go through that we can't even take off of your shoulders. You know, like we can't have a baby. So you have to do it. You know, we can't even be like, I, I, I'll step in place and have this baby for you, you know. So it just puts you in the mindset of like, dang, it, my wife is going through something. I, it's nothing I can do for her right now. And it makes it makes you feel it makes this man it makes me feel vulnerable makes me feel you know helpless like I can't do anything, and uh, you just have to be you know happy that you have strong enough women to go through this and after the after the pregnancy 
you know, they, they're able to somewhat, somewhat get their mental back too, you know, because it's just not a physical thing. It's, it's also a mental thing that you have to be mindful of. So, you know, um, it, it made me respect my wife more. It made me um, empathize a little bit more, have um, be a little bit more sympathetic and uh, sensitive to some of the things that she went through for me and for our family, you know. Mm-hmm. My husband was terrified, Darwin. My husband was terrified. Like, you know, he gave me the biggest kiss afterwards. I, I, I know him when he is nervous and, and, and when he is, is it, it, it scared him because um, that right there on their table is when they, I, I guess when they found out, oh, is she anemic? Like, she she going in and out like and, and I lost a lot of blood to the point that I had to spend extra time in the hospital. And um, you know, normally they keep you like what 72 hours for a section. I stay like another day and a half. Mm-hmm. And it was very, very scary. You know, I was blessed, you know, I was happy when I saw, you know, my little teddy bear of a child. I'm holding her. Because that's all we talked about for like seven, eight years in our marriage was having a baby, you know, having a baby, having a baby, you know, and that's the other part too. When you're not able, when you have, when you're a married couple and you have difficulty conceiving a child, it puts a toll on your marriage. And we had to hit the reset button so many times in this process of getting pregnant. And I just I, I, I want to say to women out there who if you are having fertility issues and right now you just choose not to put forth any more effort to get pregnant, don't let anybody make you feel guilty because you chose to like put the pause on it. Because I've been there before. It's an emotional roller coaster. Mm-hmm. You know. So it, it's like I said, it's so many things. I know we haven't had conversation next week, Ashley, but it's so many things. But I think the biggest thing I just want to point out is all this, you know, what black women should be doing with children and giving birth and having kids and how we should raise the children and what we should look like when we raising the kids. And it's just so much. Like I'm 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 sick of the instruction manual. I'm sick of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um I have a little- you gotta go ahead and get that baby your brother or sister. <laughs> I'm like, Play with that. Yeah, it's, it's, that's, what they say. that's what they be saying, right? <laughs> Eat extra mm-hmm. in the house, we get a puppy, maybe. <laughs> With these nuts, nigga. That's exactly what like, I did. I bought a dog. We we got a dog. Like during the pandemic, she wanted a sibling, and we went out. And my husband, they drove two and a half hours to go go pick up a dog who literally in do- in, in infant years is a 24 month old child like a 2 year old that's what she acts like i'm satisfied with that at least i can leave her here by herself during the day <laughs> i don't have to worry about another day here bill evelyn um you wanted to add something while we were talking about the men's perspective experience of childbirth I have encountered men who say that they know what she's experiencing and believe that because her body is designed for that, (laughs) that it's not important, that it doesn't matter, you know, and to those men, I have suggested your throat is designed to swallow also, but it's still wrong for somebody to force feed you. Don't think that just because a woman's body is designed to bear children, that she's just going to spring back, that she gets right back up and can run 55 marathons. Mm -hmm. That is not how physiology works in the male Mm -hmm. or the female body, but Mm -hmm. it's more imposed upon women because people begin to, they become desensitized to how intense the childbirth experience really is, particularly if they don't have anything that they've experienced to which they could compare it. I was literally going to say that. I was literally going to say that when he was talking about the man's experience um, in, you know, in the room and things like that. There are, uh, I mean, I have relatives and there are men who don't think it's important to even be there when the child is being born or anything like they do. Like you said, it is a decent, they are desensitized to the 
amount of labor, not like being in labor, but the amount of actual labor that goes into carrying a child and birthing a child. Like they, there's no respect for it. I'll put it that way. There's no respect for it. Cause I think it's this thought like, well, anybody could do it. So it's not that big a deal, but it's like, it is a big deal. You know, like, like that's kind of what their attitude is. Like I have um, a, a relative of mine who uh, had to birth her baby alone. And she was so scared. And she was there by herself. Like, she was scared for the baby. Like, it was some complications with the baby. It was some complications with the birth and all those other things. And this guy, he still, he still 